Remote viewing sounds like a science fiction concept, but it's far from that. It is very much real and a widely studied phenomenon. Skilled remote viewers have the ability to describe objects or places beyond normal reach, and research has found that it even works for targets hidden by distance, shielding, or time. Today, we will talk about Ingo Swan, a remote viewer who saw something extraordinary in a covert operation carried out by the CIA. His account opens up a world of mystery, conspiracy, and bewilderment. Are you ready to find out what he saw on the moon? The idea of remote viewing comes from parapsychology. It suggests that we have the ability to project our consciousness to places that we cannot see with our naked eyes. A major part of training in remote viewing is learning to differentiate psychic signals from mental noise. You can think of it as tuning into a specific radio frequency, and the results can range from interesting to exhilarating. Remote viewing was developed by U.S. government-funded scientists at the Stanford Research Institute in the 1970s. The project was called Stargate, and its purpose was to explore the potential of psychic abilities for military and intelligence purposes. Interestingly, the Soviets also had similar programs. During World War II, the CIA and the U.S. military's Defense Intelligence Agency requested the services of remote viewers to gather intelligence for military purposes. Edwin May, a leading investigator of remote viewing, reported 504 intelligence-gathering missions from 1973 to 1995. Believe it or not, 19 different U.S. intelligence and military organizations were involved in these missions, and 17 of them experienced 100% success. However, the implications of remote viewing terrified the government, and they ended up blocking its use in intelligence operations. The popularity of remote viewing can be credited to physicists Russell Targ and Harold Puthoff, who worked at the Stanford Research Institute. But there is one more name that is often associated with remote viewing, and that is Ingo Swan. Ingo Swan is considered the pioneer in the field of remote viewing. He possessed an unmatched skill that led him through many successful remote viewing experiments. Swan was born high in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado on September 14, 1933. His father was a regular truck driver and he had two sisters. He was very fond of his hometown and its explicit beauty, particularly the crystal clear skies where he could see the Milky Way each night. Swan always knew that he was different. The first time he experienced leaving his body was at the age of three, during an operation to remove his tonsils. Around the same time, he also became aware of butterfly lights around people, plants, and some animals. He later learned that he was actually looking at auras. By the time he turned nine, he had remotely traveled to the Milky Way. Swan wanted to share his unique talent with the world and began exploring his abilities and pushing his limits. He started signing up for different experiments where he could test his remote viewing skills. One of them included a test to see if he could influence plants with mental activity or change the temperature of an environment. Unsurprisingly, Swan was successful in each attempt. It wasn't long before he caught the attention of the Stanford Research Institute, who asked for his help in remote viewing different places in the solar system. He was assigned a task to project his consciousness to the planet Jupiter and observe its physical characteristics. Initially, Swan was a bit hesitant because he had never tested his abilities for long distances. And then there was the fear that his findings may be dismissed as made-up stories, since there was no way to corroborate the truth. However, a breakthrough appeared in the form of a NASA probe, Pioneer, that was being sent to Jupiter to study its atmosphere and surface in 1973. This gave Swan some surety that whatever he would observe on the gas giant could be confirmed by NASA's probe. Swan made some startling discoveries about Jupiter while sitting comfortably on Earth. He detected hydrogen mantle, rotating storms like cyclones, high infrared readings, ice crystals in the atmosphere, and the unusual color of the planet's clouds. 
Can you believe that Pioneer confirmed all his observations but one? Swan had seen something unexpected on Jupiter, a feature that no one had ever seen or assumed about the planet before. He saw a ring around Jupiter, quite similar to Saturn's ring. The only difference was that this ring was much smaller and closer to the planet. When Pioneer failed to observe a ring around Jupiter, it raised questions about Swan's remote viewing abilities. Neither Pioneer 10 nor Pioneer 11 saw anything that matched his description. Does that mean that Swan was wrong? Actually, no. When Voyager 1 passed by Jupiter in 1979, the probe confirmed a ring around the gas giant, and Swan was hailed as a stellar psychic who could see truly beyond his vision. He had proved that he was the best at his skill. Therefore, it only made sense for the U.S. government to take notice of Swan's amazing talent. In March 1975, Swan received a phone call at 3 in the morning. He was instructed to go to Washington and visit the Museum of Natural History. He received direct instructions to stand near the elephant in the rotunda at noon. The unusual request terrified yet excited him. Swan took his position at the museum at the instructed time, and just after a few minutes, he was approached by a stranger who looked like he belonged to the military. Without speaking a word, he handed Swan a note that said, Do not speak or ask questions. This is for our safety as well as yours. Please follow me. The two men quietly walked towards a car where another man was waiting for him inside. Swan was combed for any listening devices, and when the men were satisfied, they asked him if he could work for them on a project that required his unique abilities. Swan suspected that the man belonged to the military and, therefore, he felt safe with them. After agreeing to the initial terms, he was driven to an undisclosed location with a bag over his head. After covering some distance, he was transferred into a helicopter that flew him to another site. On landing, he was guided inside a building, and that's where the bag was taken off his face. Can you guess who the two men were? They were CIA operatives working on a covert mission, the Stargate. Initially, Swan wasn't offered much details about the project he was hired for. They promised to pay him $1,000 a day in cash for his services, but with some conditions. Swan could not leave the facility while working on the project and was forbidden from revealing the details of his mission for at least 10 years. For a man who had never been valued for his work in terms of remuneration, Swan couldn't pass on the amazing offer. When the day finally arrived, the CIA revealed their target. They wanted Swan to project his consciousness to the far side of the moon and report what he saw. Swan couldn't believe it. Why would the CIA be interested in looking at the lunar surface while the country was at war with the Soviet Union? He would have understood if they hired him to spy on the enemy. But what did they expect to find on the moon? Keeping his thoughts to himself, Swan began exploring all the coordinates the CIA had given him. Some of these places were completely ordinary with large cliffs, dunes of white powder, and craters spread across the surface. But some locations displayed signs of activity, something you would never expect to find on the moon. He saw tracks on the moon's surface created when you use machinery like tractors on the ground. Then, some patterns could only be made by wind, and this was surprising because the moon apparently has no atmosphere. Hence, no wind. At one point, he noticed a strange crater filled with green haze. He wanted to see what was beyond the haze and therefore stepped closer to the object. But what he saw left him shocked. There was a large structure that looked like an airfield with towers, roads, hangars, and machinery. In fact, there were visible signs of industrial activity all around the area. After reporting what he saw, Swan moved to another location where he saw more structures emitting light of different colors. And here again, he saw the same haze. Determined to discover the source of this light, Swan decided to move closer to the object. He could see windows on the dome structures. But when he looked through one of them, the scene in front of him left him shaking. In seed were humanoid figures that looked like humans but were definitely aliens. They appeared to be working on something. 
Stunned by the presence of aliens on the lunar surface, Swan felt frozen in place. Suddenly, two of those creatures stopped their activity, and one by one, the others in the room followed suit. And without warning, they all turned to the window through which Swan was projecting his consciousness. That's when he realized the aliens were psychics too. When Swan reported what was going on, and the CIA operatives immediately asked him to come back quickly. As soon as he opened his eyes, Swan confronted the twins. You already knew they were psychic, didn't you? Without responding to his question, one of them informed him that the experiment was over. There was only one possible explanation for what Swan witnessed on the moon. Aliens were real, and they had already established their bases on the moon, and the CIA knew about it. Swan wrote about everything he saw in his book, The Penetration, which was published in 2011. Although he was unable to disclose information deemed sensitive by the CIA, the revelations he made in his book really changed our perspective of how we view our space exploration missions and the level of truth in alien conspiracy theories. What do you think about Swan's observations on the far side of the lunar surface? If he's telling the truth, why does the U.S. government insist on the Great Silence, even though they have found evidence of alien existence so close to Earth? Let us know your opinions in the comment section below. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel with notifications on for more thrilling space videos.